Good morning, good morning. Good morning today, how are you? Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Rashida Brundage. And I'm here with the daily devotion today that is in my camera. Hold up, I'm going to fix that because I'm going to keep thinking I got something on my face. <laughs> good morning. Hey, Hilda. Good morning. Good morning, people of the Most High God. My name is Rashida Brundage. I'm here with the daily devotion Monday through Friday between the 6.30 and 7 a.m. hour. If you would, as you come in, if you would share on Periscope, Facebook, and Twitter, if you would, as you come in watching the replay, go ahead and share. If this is your first time, go ahead and watch a little bit, and you can share along or at the end so that somebody somebody in your life needs the word of the Lord on today. Somebody in your life is looking for um, something to uplift them on this Wednesday. It is what people call hump day, but it's the middle of the week. Hello. How you doing? Hello, Coach. Hello, Hilda. That we are um, in the middle of the week, and you, you we're on your way out of whatever you started in on Monday. So it gives us a chance to reevaluate, to reassess, as Coach Cracker said, to adjust, to uh, re to assess and adjust. So we adjust to what is going on in our lives. This is Wednesday. This is not just looking forward to Friday. Good morning, Mama. Thank you. It's not just looking forward to Friday, but it's looking forward to the accomplishment of what God has set, the course he has set you on for today. I ask you all to excuse me because I have been sitting in this chair for about a half an hour or so, uh, doing this, that, and the third. And so as I uh, adjust... <laughs> Just bear with me. Hey, Faye, good morning. So as you come on in, if you don't know that um, we are in the book of um, Four Days of Biblical Declarations, Advancing from Test to Testimony Through the Activation of God's Word by Dr. Kimberly Jones. This book is available on KimberlyJ.net, and it is also available on Amazon.com. Okay? I'm trying to do something about this lighting situation. For some reason, I really want to think both of my devices are... I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to start with day 33 because we're got counting down to 2018. So it's 33 days. Today is the 29th. Tomorrow's the 30th. That's two days. December is 31 days. So you have 33 days to accomplish those things that you want to have accomplished in 2018. If you was going to publish that book, if you, was, you can go on Create Space and get on Amazon before 2018, you can do a lot of things in 33 days days if you have an action plan and you adhere to that plan I, I started the action plan on the other day and i started looking at it. i'm like i should have looked at my calendar before i set this up because i got too much stuff um you know it's nine hour training days at work an hour and a half of commute time um lately i've just been falling asleep at eight o'clock if i sit down in any chair at eight o'clock i am going to sleep and so i'm waking up at four in the morning so my goal is before I get on here is to do something. I don't care if it's scheduling my posts. I don't care if it's preparing. But, you know, my mind for the rest of the day. Because this is the day. This is our declaration number one. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Whether I woke up at four, whether I wake up at two, whether I wake up at six or eight in the morning, that I will rejoice and be glad in this day. It is my desire. It is my a mission for today is rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to rejoice over the Lord, over the God of my salvation. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice because he woke me up. I will rejoice because I have breath. I will rejoice because I live, I move, and I have my brain being. I will praise him and thank him for the job that I have. I praise him for the peace of the job. Some of y'all not working 40 hours. Praise him for the peace of a job. Praise him for the, the amount of money you are making. Praise him for the peace of a car that you do have. Praise him for that. Yep, I forgot. Praise him for that. Praise him for that because God is good and his mercy endures through all generations. And he is worthy to be praised on today. He is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the honor. He is worthy to be worshipped on today. You know, I was sitting here. I was uh, multitasking. And I knew I was going to, I was like, I got to remember my mascara on. I did not. So when I get off here, somebody texts me and say, remember to put your mascara on. All right. Declaration number two. Declaration number two, Jeremiah 29 and 11. We've been quoting it and we've been talking about it, but have we really understood what Jeremiah 29 and 11 says? I decree that God is thinking thoughts of peace and not of evil about me and has given me an expected end. When God created you, he created you with your end in mind. He created you to, to overcome all 
all that that you would uh, that you would uh, face now so you can make that expected end see a lot of times we live as though the things that we come across um, have taken God by surprise or we live as though high Tika that God has not been concerned about us but this that second declaration Jeremiah 20 and 11 I decree that God is thinking thoughts of peace and not of evil about me a lot of times we think evil thoughts of ourselves or we think God should be thinking uh, evil towards us and not as not good thoughts because we feel like we have gone too far left or gone too far right or disobeyed too much or we didn't pray enough or we didn't fast enough or we don't know enough word but he had a thought about you not only a thought of you not only a thought of good but before he made you he created a plan for you that he has an expected end for you when parents have children they expect those children to come to a certain end they have a certain end even if you don't feel like your child needs to be a doctor or need to be a lawyer or need to be a police officer or need to be a fireman but first you have an expectation of them what to be godly children then the other expectation is you expect them to do what is right you expect them to stay out of jail you expect them to stay out of trouble you expect them to go to school and do what's right in school you have an expectation of your children the same thing as our father he has an expectation of us and when he created us and so he has a thought of good thoughts a lot of times we allow the enemy to make us believe that God thinks bad thoughts about us that God is not concerned about us that God does not care about us that God does not love us because of the sin that has um, that we have um, yielded to the temptations that we yielded to but God is there and he said there's no temptation taken unto man in which that he is not able to to allow you strength to bear it. But with the temptation, he would give you a way of escape. All right. Declaration number three. John 14, 21. Y'all keep the time for me now. John 14 and 21. I decree that God will manifest himself unto me today because I love him. And I am obedient to his con. Because his commandment, she said, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus to them that walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. But I decree that I, God will manifest himself unto me because I love him and I'm obedient to his, his uh, commandments. You can't preach God to other people if you don't know that he's real. If he has not manifested himself in your life, if he has not manifested his goodness in your life, if he has not done if you have not seen, if you have not heard, if you have not experienced God, it's going to be very hard for you to try to explain to somebody how you know God is real. If you never knew that God could comfort you in a time of trouble and you've never been comforted, it's going to be hard for you to show somebody that God can comfort them. If you have never been uh, uh delivered, it's hard for you to tell somebody that they can hold on till they become delivered. You know, uh, second corinthians chapter one first corinthians chapter one of the corinthians chapter one it talks about going through trials and tribulation and with those trials and tribulation that you learn to have compassion to, to those and be able to serve those that have gone through what you have went through the reason we suffer in this body is not for our own and we don't suffer just for us jesus didn't just suffer for himself he suffered because of us he was saving us. And so when you're going through your trial, when you're going through your temptation, when you're going through your test and you stay with the Lord and you come out on the other side, it's not for you to sit up on your chair in church and just say, oh, I've been delivered. But it's up to you to go help tell somebody, no, honey, don't you give up. Don't you let him back in. Don't you go back to that type of lifestyle. Don't you sell out for your children. You stay the course because God can deliver you. Why? Because I know because he delivered me. Right? So we have to stand and know that God will manifest himself in our life today. And that today um, we, will, we will love him and be obedient to him. Good morning, Trinika. Good morning. Who else popped in? Thank you for the hearts. He is a deliverer. Declaration number four, 1 John 5 and 4 says, Today I confess that I am born of God and through faith I will overcome anything that the world may present today. Today I confess that I am born of God and through my faith I will overcome anything this world may present present today a lot of times we live in anxiety because of what may happen one it hasn't happened yet so don't get anxious for nothing yeah okay don't get anxious over nothing and today we're confessing that we're born of god and we will overcome anything that this earth can present to us today why because we're now facing it alone because god is with us he's there he's as close as your wrist is to your elbow i'm gonna keep saying it again 
he is as close to you as your wrist is to your elbow. Sometimes we look, I not, I not been there. You know, you don't want to get up and go to work. You hate waking up in the morning and having to go to work. You Your night turns into a bad night at 7 o'clock because you realize in a minute you need to go to sleep so you can get up and go to work. And you hate going to work and you spend 8, 9, 10 hours being someplace you hate to be. But there's nothing that you can face today. Right? That you can't overcome. You can overcome. We talked about overcoming procrastination yesterday. I did something I've been procrastinating about doing yesterday. It take me but two minutes once I put my mind to it. Yesterday we said we won't be procrastinators or slothful. But today, we're going to be overcomers. We're going to overcome that fear. We're going to overcome that slothfulness. We're going to overcome that anger. We're going to overcome emotional eating or emotional behavior or acting out because things aren't the way we thought. We're going to overcome making bad decisions because of bad circumstances. Just because you have a bad circumstance does not, does not give you a right to make a bad decision. Yeah, the world understands, oh, well, you know, she was going through and she did that and da, da, da. But no, we don't live by the outside circumstances. We live by spirit. And so therefore we are overcomers. Declaration number five, First Peter 2 and 9. I decree that I am chosen of God and I will show forth the praises of him who called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I decree that I am chosen of God and I will show forth the praises of him who called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I decree that God chose me. If God didn't choose me, he wouldn't have made me. All right. God chose me and I will show forth the praises of my God. Because he's called me out of darkness into the marvelous light. He's called us out of sin. He called us into the righteous. He has welcomed us into the beloved. He has adopted us into the royal family. We are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Yes, we are children of the most high God. The first scriptures, uh, Trinica, uh, declaration number one is Psalms 118 and 24. Declaration number two, 20, uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Declaration number three, John 14 and 21. Declaration number four, first John five and four. And now we're on declaration number five, first Peter two and nine. I decree that I am chosen of God and I will show forth the praise of him. We're going to praise him because we are chosen. And called me out of darkness into his marvelous life. You know, the first thought that flashed through my mind was when you get engaged. And he chose you. He chose to marry you. He chose to ask you to be his for the rest of your life. That you guys will make a covenant between you, yourselves and God. That you will live a holy life a holy life in matrimony and so he puts that ring on your finger and all oh, why that ring on your finger you will show forth his praises because every time something happened you right-handed but every time it happened you your left hand go up so they can see that ring that left hand go up that's how i'm gonna be when i get engaged y'all gonna be thinking something wrong with my finger i'm gonna be shaking these fingers i'm gonna be pointing with this little ring finger. i'm gonna do everything so y'all can see the praises of him because he chose me <laughs> So we need to be the same way with the Lord. We should be speaking the praises of our God because he chose us. Declaration number six, 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. I decree that this light affliction I'm dealing with today is but for a moment and is working out something far greater in me. I decree that this light affliction I am dealing with today is but for a moment and I am working out and God is working out something far greater in me. Number one, when you're going through something, it always seems greater because it's the fourth four thought and it's the foremost thing on your mind. But let me tell you something, time always passes and everything you're going through is temporary. Even if it's unto death, it's temporary because once you die in Christ, you rise in with Christ, right? So you will reign with him. So there is no, it's still temporary. It's still temporary. Whatever you're going through, it's still temporary. It's not going to be forever. They can't do this forever, right? Nothing is forever, ever, ever. Forever, ever, ever, ever. No, it's not forever. Okay, so today, I decree that this affliction, this light affliction, this great affliction um, that we are going through 
Today is but for a moment and is working out something far greater in me. It's teaching you patience, right? It's teaching you how to have love. It's teaching you to have endurance, how to be long-suffering, how to be committed to the God that you serve when things ain't going like you thought they should be. Declaration number seven, sorry. Declaration number seven, first John four and four. Today I will be victorious in all that I do because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Come on, is that so feel you? Let me see if I got the name right. Good morning, so feel you. I got it right. Woo, woo, woo. I'll be trying to remember people's names. All right. Today. I will be victorious in all that I do because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Even when it doesn't look like it's producing what you thought it would produce, go ahead and do the work anyway and you're going to be victorious because the victory is not your responsibility. The victory is God's responsibility because he is the one that told us that we are victorious. He's the one that told us that we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. He is the one. The word of God has said that. So it's not our responsibility to make it victorious. Our responsibility is to do the work. The outcome and the result all belong to God. It all belongs to God. Declaration number eight. Your new beginning, your new season starts now when you have a new thought and you have a new action. So you will have a new result. I've been saying it every time we go through these declarations. Your new beginning is now. It doesn't have to be next week. You don't have to wait for the preacher to pray for you. You don't have to wait for the mother to take the oil and slather you down with it. You don't have to wait to the next revival. You don't have to wait to the next altar call. You don't have to wait to the next Sunday service. You don't have to wait to the next terrier service. Did anybody have terrier? services anymore you don't have to wait for the next uh prophetic move you don't have to wait for the next apostolic um wonder to happen all you need is a new thought a new mind according to the word of god and your new beginning can start right now today november the 29th 2017 6 46 a.m eastern standard time your new beginning can start now i decree that i love god do you love god I love God. All right. And I have not seen. I haven't seen. And ear have not heard. Or have it entered into the heart of man the things that God has for me in this season. Come on now. That and preach. I decree that I love God. And because I love him, I can't even see or hear or imagine in my heart everything. I can sort of hit on a little bit of what God might have prepared for me, but I don't know everything that God has prepared for me in this new season starting right now. This new season starting right now, God has prepared something for you, something that you can't even see with your physical eye or even in your imagination because he said, I can do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or even think according to the power of the Holy Ghost that lives within you. So, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man all of the good things that God has prepared for you in this season. I'm talking about all those good things that God has prepared for you in this season. See, some of you scared to walk because you're not sure God got a good thing for you. Because if God is a good God, everything he made is good. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and he called forth the light and the darkness and he saw that it was good. Then he went forth and he separated the firmament from the waters and he said it was good. He called forth the fish of the sea, the monsters and the, the Leviathan from the sea and he put the fowls in the air and he said it was good he put grass on the earth and made trees and he made every animals and he said every animal and he said it was what good and then he created man in his image and he molded him and he breathed into him the breath of life and he created him in his image and he said it was what good and then he made woman because he saw that it was not good for man to be alone and he created woman out of the rib that he took from the from man and created her and adam called her woe man and he said thus every man should leave what and she cleave right and he said that woman was good so everything that god creates 
I want you to understand this. Everything that God creates is good. So even when you're on that path to doing something in this new season and it don't feel good, you are comfortable and it seems extremely hard. I want you to know that where you're going to is a good place. What you're doing is a good thing because it's a God thing. Your good thing is a good thing because it's a God thing. Everything God made was good. All right. Declaration number nine, Psalms 119 and 105. Good morning, Danita. Today, the word of the Lord will serve as a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thank you, Faye. Today, the word of the Lord will serve as a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You're wondering which way you should go. You are confused. You have been uh, boggled in your mind. But he says the word of the Lord. So you need to seek out the word of the Lord. You're trying to make a good decision. Seek out the word of the Lord, whether it's in the Bible, whether it's in prayer, whether he speaks to your heart or your soul. Good morning, Francesca, that you should know that that is a light unto your path. That if you follow the word of God, that he will lead you where you need to go. He will lighten up the way. He will enlighten you, right? He will enlighten your way of thinking. He will lighten your planning. He will be the light and and a, a, a lamp unto your feet. Like, it's sort of like if you took that, um, you know those little lamps they put on their heads if they're joggers or they're working in the dark, the construction workers, and they strap them to their head and they have the light. <laughs> That if you strap it to your feet, it will be a lamp unto your feet. Tanika, declaration number eight. Sorry about that. I was excited. Declaration number eight. First Corinthians two and nine. First Corinthians two and nine with declaration number eight. Declaration number nine is Psalms 119 and 105. Today, the word of the Lord will serve as a lamp unto my feet and a light unto our pathway. So we're searching for the word of the Lord today in prayer, in supplication, in, in fasting if you're fasting, and studying the word, and, and consecrating yourself to come in from among them and be ye separated. Come on, listen to the word of God. Listen to the songs of the Lord and listen to the Holy Spirit and allow the word of the Lord to come to you that it will enlighten your pathway. Declaration number 10 is the seal the deal declaration of the day. So we're sealing the deal on the Lord. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We have decreed that God is taking thoughts of peace towards us, not of evil. And he has an expected end for us. Uh, John 14 and 21, declaration number three, I decree that God will manifest himself to me today because I love him and I'm obedient to him. Declaration number four, we confess that we are born of God and through his faith, we will overcome anything that presents, uh, that may present us on today. A declaration number five, we have decreed that we have chosen of God and He will show. we will show forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. We have decreed that in this affliction, light affliction that we're dealing with today is only temporary, it's only for a moment and is working through us for greater good. We are victorious in everything that we do because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We have decreed that we love God and eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of men all of the good things that God has prepared for me in this new season today the word of the Lord will serve as a lamp unto my feet a light unto my path where I will no longer walk in darkness and in confusion and in chaos and number 10 of 1st John 3 and 22 we want to seal the deal out of 1st John 3 and 22 I decree that so whatever I ask of God, I will receive because I keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. Yes, I decree that when I come to the Father, he said, first you must come to me um, because what? You believe me. You can't come to me if you don't believe I am. And he said that I am not just that, but I am a rewarder to them that diligently seek me. Those that come to me must first believe that I am, that he is God. And so we believe that he's God. And he said, if you come to me by faith, asking anything, then you believe that you shall receive. Come on. In the New Testament, when he's talking about praying to the Father, that we don't pray amiss, but we pray knowing that God hears and God answers. We pray knowing that God sits on the throne and he is not a high priest that cannot be touched. Come on. And because of this, he will, I keep his commandments and do what is pleasing into his sight. I live to please the Lord. I often tell when I was teaching the young ladies in Sunday school to teach teenagers i would tell them you know they get questions is this a sin is that a sin is this a sin i said you know what the first thing to do is to learn your word 
Because when you learn the word of God, you learn what pleases him and what displeases him. When you have the Holy Ghost and you sit to the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, you would know what displeases him because he will let you know when something is displeasing unto him. And then it's not about the do's and the don'ts. Do we drink? Don't we drink? Do we wear pants? Do we won't wear pants? Do we wear makeup? Do we don't wear makeup? Do we dance? Do we don't dance? When it comes to pleasing the Lord, you won't have to worry about the do's and the don'ts. And because I please him, because I live according to the word of God, I can ask what I will and he will receive you. Lord, I praise and I thank you on today. I thank you for your love and kindness. Thank you for your tender mercy. Thank you for your grace, God. Thank you for your peace and your joy you bestowed upon us, God. Thank you that you hear and that you answer prayer. God, we thank you for this Wednesday, the middle of this week, because we're in the midst of our turnaround, because we're turning around on our way out of whatever situation that we're in, knowing that you have brought us this far, that at the beginning of our situation, we didn't see our way out. We didn't know which way to go. We didn't know what to do, but because of what we declared on today, God, we know that our way will be made plain. We know that we will have a light before, that you will go before us like you did the children of Israel, that you'll be a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, that we will not be lost, that we will not be uh, mistaken of where we're going, God, but we will have a clear vision, that we will have clarity in our vision, clarity in our plan, clarity in our services. In the name of Jesus and God, we glorify you today. We magnify you. We give you praise on today. God, as you go forth before us, God, we ask you to cleanse us from all sins and unrighteousness. Anything that's in us that displeases you, oh God, Lord, remove it in the name of Jesus. And God, give us a sensitivity to your spirit. Give us an ear to hear you, a heart and a mind to obey you. Give you feet, give us feet to follow you and hands to do your work in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you to wash our mind with the word of God, that our minds will be the mind of Christ, that the mind of Christ will be in us, that we will not be conformed to this world, God, but that we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we will know what is that good and that acceptable and that perfect will of God, that we will be and be before you whole and entire and wanting for nothing. God, we praise and thank you for these declarations. We praise and thank you for the last 33 days of 2017. God, we bind the enemy that comes to steal our joy. We bind the enemy that comes to steal our peace. We bind the enemy that comes to steal our purpose, oh God. And Lord, those things that we had said that we were going to do in this year, God, Lord, let these 33 days be the most productive days of the year. Let these 33 days bring forth new seasons. Let it bring forth new fruit. Let it bear new fruit in the name of Jesus, a fruit that we will remain through Christ Jesus, that we will be found being in the vine, that we will be found being in the vineyard in the name of Jesus. And God, we glorify you. God, we honor you. We give you praise because you are worthy. You are the true and the living God, and there is none like you. God, we come before you with praise and thanksgiving. We come before you a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. God, you, our feet belong to you. Our hands belong to you. Our hearts and our minds belong to you. Our finances belong to you. Our children belong to you. Our homes and our jobs belong to you. Our transportation belongs to you. Our worship belongs to you. Our praise belongs to you. Our songs and our voices belong to you, oh God. And as we go forth on this day, God, help us to know that we are yours and you are a keeper of your children, that you have not forsaken the work of your hands and we are the work of your hands. So God, we thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for everything that you're going to do. And God, we thank you and we lift you up and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Repeat after me. I am blessed. I am highly favored. I'm the apple of my father's eye. He is concerned about me. He thinks that I am the best thing since sliced bread. Yes, I can cast my cares on him and know that he cares for me and that he loves me with an everlasting love. So remember that you are blessed. Yes, you are favored. Yes, you are the apple of your father's eye. Yes, he is concerned about you. Yes, you are the best thing since sliced bread to him. I already told you everything he made was good, was good. It don't matter what happened to you as a child. It don't matter if they beat you. It don't matter if they molested you. It don't matter if they told you you were stupid. It don't matter. 
matter if they told you you were ugly. It does it matter if they told you that you was just like your daddy, that you was going to be a crack and you was a crack baby, that you was born addicted. It doesn't matter because when God created you, he created you with purpose. And the fact that you are here today is an indicator, as my pastor say, is, is indicative of God's goodness. It's indicative of God's goodness. It's indicative of his grace. Your being here today is an indicator that God has been good to you. It's an indicator that he has a greater end than your beginning. And even though the devil tried to take you out, even though the devil tried to destroy you in the middle of your divorce, in the middle of your situation, even when they tried to destroy you in school, they tried to destroy your spirit. They tried to destroy your purpose. They tried to destroy your confidence. The enemy came in as he and he like a flood and he tried to take you out the game but the bible said that the lord came in and lifted up a standard if you will stand in the standard you will overcome all that back then you will overcome all that yes the holiday season yes you're gonna see that auntie again thank you Danita. you're gonna see that uncle again you gonna see that cousin again but it don't matter what they said it don't matter what they do because their words don't mean anything the word of the lord has come forth to tell you today that you are good because you were created Aided by a good and a holy God and there's nothing that the devil can do there's nothing that other people can say that can deter the purpose that God has placed on the inside of you there's nothing that people can do or say you are not bound by what people say let me let me let me I gotta go but let me let me let me can y'all give me give me give me give me I'm going to tell you what, what the preacher said this morning in prayer. I'm going to tell you what she said. At the point of your disaster, and I don't have the scripture, so y'all have to go and watch the 5 a.m. prayer at New Light Christian Center, Pastor Prashia Hilliard, okay? It's on Facebook. They got a website and all this 5 a.m. prayer. Woo! At the point of your disaster, at the point of your delay, build an altar, and, and that will be the end of it. This is the end of your days of disaster and failure. Because of the prayers you have prayed, you will no longer fall into the hands and the opinions of men, but you will fall into the hands and the mercy and the grace of God. Did y'all catch that? Because of the prayers you've prayed, you will no longer fall into the hands and the opinions of men. And see, we 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 worrying about the president. We worrying about the water situation. We worrying about the schools. But you continue in praying and living according to the word of God. And you will no longer fall in the hands of men and the opinions of others. But you will fall into the hands, the grace and the mercy of God. That's it for today. You all have a beautiful and a blessed day. I'll see you all back here tomorrow between the 6.30 and 7 a.m. hour with day 32 of our declarations. Bye.